Hey, I've got a bit of a different one for you today. Um, I'm on my phone right now because we're in a factory, um, so sorry for the, uh, the shaky quality. But um, we're fixing this machine behind me here. Uh, this is a die cutter. This uh, bottom section here folds up and then against the top section and uh, cuts plastic, stuff like a uh, just thin sheet plastic like this into a whatever shape you need. The bits of wood above me, all the way around here, they're all different shapes of uh, die cutter. It's like a bit of plywood with a blade that's inset sticking out at 90 degrees to the surface of the, me the, the wood and that goes in the die cutter. So when um, the operator uh, hits a pedal or it's on a timer, it closes up, cuts the plastic, opens up, you pull the bit of cut plastic out and it's you know, for making things like uh, signs and placards and uh, the shape, like when you open up a, uh, a cardboard box and you've got the shape of that uh, cardboard, you can do that with the plastic as well to make plastic boxes. So this machine behind me has uh, got a bit of a problem. We're going to uh, fix that and I'll, um, I'll flip around to the, uh, the other side of the phone so I can talk properly and uh, not be in the shop with my ugly face. And um, we'll show you how we're going to fix this thing. So the problem with this machine, th this part here is what folds up. You put the die in here, you slide the plastic down here, it comes up and closes and then opens up. Control box there. I've upgraded this with a um, solid state relay for the, uh, the uh, relay that controls all of this movement because it was about once a year that that thing was wearing out. We put a solid state one in there so it's lasting a lot longer and is a bit quieter as well. Uh, but what's happening is this after a while is stopping halfway because down in here we've got a clutch. Just at the end of my finger there is a clutch. This is a flywheel connected to this motor. This spins and it's got another flywheel, just a, a, an idling flywheel just on the other side down there. Um, this machine here is idling away just like that. Nice and open frame design. About 50 years old these machines are. So uh, the, general, uh, the general thing for these machines is not to be used by idiots. Don't go sticking your fingers where they don't belong. Um, there's the, uh, the clutch there. That gets pulled in by these pull rods down the bottom there. Now I'll move myself in. There's the other idler wheel there. So it's just, it can be moved by hand. It just idles away kind of working on the friction of the bearings and stuff to start that one spinning up. But down in here is where our problem was. I've already taken the, uh, the piece off, but these, this rod here comes up to a cam. Uh, it might be the other, oh, it's that way. Comes up to a, uh, a cam. And uh, then it's got this little lever. You can see there it's acting on the clutch. And uh, this rod here acts on the other clutch. So basically what happens is this motor is on a timer and it will do one revolution and stop and one revolution and stop and one revolution and stop. And every time that does a revolution, it engages the clutch, allows the, uh, the machine to close, open and then it stops. Then it will rotate, it will close, open and stop. There's a, this micro switch here is for the timing. So it, this, this allows the machine to know what position this is in. And what we've had was this disc and that rotates, and you can see there, that's what the problem is. Uh, but this would uh, press up against that switch, so it knows what part of the cycle is, uh, the machine is in. So as that disc rotates, it'll press that in, it goes, the machine knows, yep, the, uh, the uh, machine is closing, and then once it gets past the cycle, it knows the machine is opening, you know, his machine's closing and opening, and then it, it does some other processes on the machine as well at the same time. It's all synchronized. But this uh, this old disc, it's like a, this machine is like I said, thirty or forty or fifty years old. This is made of phenolic resin. You can see there, we've worn a track into this thing. It's this is kind of it seems like it's got a harder outside coating and it's a bit softer on the inside. Um, you can see there where it's chipped away. So it seems like this is worn through that harder coating, and then once it's got inside oil and stuff's got in there. It's just worn away, just gone like paper, just like wearing cardboard. So that means that this machine didn't know when it was actually uh, closing the uh, the jaws because it's worn down and that switch wasn't switching properly and the machine would stop. So I'm going to have to take this home and um, I'm going to design one of these up and uh, we're going to make a prototype out of uh, up out of PET on the or PET, PET plastic on the 3D printer, get this thing back up and running and uh, I'm going to get my brother, the other half of this channel, to use a CNC mill and uh, 
cut one of these out, but he's in another country. I'm in Japan right now, and uh, he's over in Australia, so uh, it's going to take a few weeks for him to get that thing shipped over. So we're going to use the uh, 3D printed one in the meantime just to get this machine running and to double check the fitment of my design. And then my brother will uh, he'll go and cut that thing up and send it over. All right, we're back, and I've got the part. Oh, that grey uh, pet, looking pretty good. I might have to do a little bit of adjustment on these holes depending on their clearance with the bolts and stuff and maybe this one here. That's uh, just size to the exact size of the old part but you know tolerances and stuff I might have to give that a bit of a file but that is going to go whoop, down in here in place of this one. It should be a perfect replica to sit there like that. So there we go with the new one installed, all nice and tight. You can see the uh, the shape there as that rotates around. It's going to push on that switch there. All down here, you can see all the grindings of the old one. All from around here. It's all on the switch. All down here. Ugh. So I'll give that a bit of a bit of a wipe later. All I've got to do is put the little nozzle, the schnoz on there, and that gives us our uh, offset for the cam action which then pushes this push rod that way I believe around like this like on a steam train you know but in reverse which then activates our clutches to make the machine open and close easy peasy all right so I'm just giving this thing a, a bit of a spin just to um see if we've got no binding and it turns out we do uh, I've made this as close as I could to the original design but it may be slightly different because it was all worn out um, I could have taken one from that machine that's slowly idling there, but um, it means that would have been out of production. So um, I didn't want to put a machine out of production for a few days, or an extra machine out of production for a few days. But um, yeah, it looks like this here is a bit close. So that's pushed all the way in, and it's not at the top of the curve there yet. So needs, this needs to move back by a millimetre or two. We might have some adjustment here on these two bolts down the bottom. So I'll have to um, have a look at that. If I can move that away, that'll be fine. But if not, I might have to just change my design, bring this one in a little bit to um, give a bit more room. So have a look at that, and hopefully we can adjust this here. So there's our bracket. You can see there's a little bit of adjustment here, just a millimetre or two. So I'm just going to file just here and just here, just so we can move that away a bit further. Um, I could redesign the part, but I want to get the machine working now. So I'll just file that a bit bigger. And that'll give us more adjustment in the future as well anyway so it won't be a problem at all a little bit of a gap there that's perfect now so that means that this disc isn't trying to slam that down to the bottom or trying to go beyond and break the switch I think that might be part of the problem from before is that it was going right down to the bottom on that uh, phenolic uh, disc and it's just worn out so uh, that there is a good amount of play it's well and truly engaged but just a little bit of uh, leeway there. So all I have to do now is turn this around so it's in the disengaged position then it's uh, put the rods together and uh, we're good to turn on and see if it works. We're all back together with the uh, rods and we are ready to uh, start this machine up so I'll move out the way and go for it. Looking good. I'm going to give that a win. So I'll get that piece there made up out of a HDPE plastic and we'll uh, replace that in there to make sure it lasts for a long time. Next step, over to my brother. Okay guys, so we've got the CNC machine here and the CNC computer. This is a dedicated Windows 7 PC, it's just a low end Dell computer I got second out of eBay. But that runs the um, CNC software and drives um, everything there. Uh, so we'll get the chopping board into the air and off we go.
So we got the uh, new disc installed, all working quite well, fit perfectly. And um, yeah, a little bit of dirt on there, that's alright, that's just from running against the uh, limit switch here. And we also had to replace the brake inside this motor, this blue part here. That motor there is, um, is an old motor, you can't buy them anymore, but it's a geared motor with a, uh, a brake in, in, integrated in there. And they're very expensive to replace, but we found a shop that could replace the brake pad, they made a custom one up, and um, that's now working perfectly. It was slipping and stuff and now it's stopping like straight away, it's real good. So as this rotates, it turns a clutch on, the machine operates, that continues to rotate around to the off position, then uh, the clutches disengage, this brake comes on, the machine stops, waits for the next cycle, then repeats over and over and over. Now, the machine was stopping in just the wrong position because everything's been tightened up. It's like a 30 or 40 year old machine, and um, once uh, we've tightened everything up, it's out of adjustment because it was adjusted for that slack. So what I've had to do up here is, uh, this here is, tells the machine where in the cycle the whole mechanism is. And because it's tightened up, it was uh, closing the wrong position, and then when it started, it will jump a little bit as it caught up that slack, and then continued in the cycle. So I've had to drill a few more of these holes to move this further back, so that it would uh, think it's at the top later in the cycle, and then it would break at the correct time. Because it was breaking sooner, it was, it's breaking quicker, it was breaking too soon. So I've had to delay the uh, stop time, and now it stops right when the, uh, the jaws are fully open right at that precise point. So yeah, that's uh, now a working machine. So I'll uh, reorient myself behind this machine to a safe location and uh, we'll run it through a few cycles and show you how it works. Flywheels are spinning. And we'll run it through a cycle. So that's one cycle, you can see that uh, right, white disc rotating and the cam's moving. We'll do it once more. So the clutch is engaging and disengaging. And then the brake there, you can see that brake is coming on and off. If I come up over the top, I will show you the actual jaws. Alright. And that's stopping perfectly. Awesome. Problem solved. Thumbs up. Excellent. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. If you ever need to fix one of these machines, that's how you do it. We'll see you in the next one.